Hi, today we are going to take a look at customizing the Hi's interface so you can tailor it more to your specific needs. So let's open Hi's and what I've done, I've reset my layout. So this is the default Hi's layout. If you've just installed Hi's, this is what you should see when you open it. So let's just make that full screen. So up in the top left, we've got the menu uh, menu bar. We've also got uh, a little button over here, the Highs logo. You can click that, it'll tell you some information about the Highs version you have installed. We have some buttons along the top here. We'll look at those in a moment. Over the right hand side, we have a MIDI panic button. So if you get hanging notes, just hit that button and it'll kill all the notes. Uh, a little activity indicator. So if I play some MIDI notes, that should light up. We can see it's lighting up green now. I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard. A bit of information, uh, status information about the instrument. Uh, voices, beats per minute, and uh, CPU usage. This little box here, this is actually the volume meters. So if we had some sound coming out of highs, this would show in there. We've got a button over here for the settings. And that is also accessible from the file menu and preferences. And then the last thing we've got here is this button enable layout mode, which you can also activate by pressing F6 on your keyboard. And we'll look at what that does in a little while. So I'm just going to open one of my projects in high. So we have something to sort of um, work with and see what we're doing. So I'll just open my last save project. So over here on the right, you can see over console, there's also um, a little panel above the console with uh, some various options that we're not going to explore in this particular video. And over on the left, we have this blank panel called the left panel. And this is the place we're going to start. So we are currently in the main workspace. And you can see over here on the right, as I hover my mouse over, we get a tooltip saying main workspace. So if I click that button, it's not going to do anything because that's where we are. We can also go into a scripting workspace to edit our scripts, a sampler workspace to work with samples, we have a custom workspace, which we'll look at a bit more later on. And then over here, we've got three things that aren't workspaces. We've got in the middle, we've got the interface preview. So that pops up and shows the interface that your plugin will actually have when it's exported. We've got this macro controller and we've got a preset browser. So we're not interested in the macro controller and preset browser today. We're mainly interested in the workspaces. So let's go back to the main workspace and we're going to customize this left hand panel. So one thing I always like to have is when I'm working on my various modules. So here's a sampler, for example, and we've got some, uh, what do we have? We've got some MIDI process here. We've got some scripts and whatnot. So I like to also be able to see my user interface while I'm tweaking these, because sometimes you're linking controls on your interface to your MIDI processors, to, to your script. And to open this version of the interface all the time is um, not really ideal because as you can see, it blocks off the MIDI processors, especially when you've got a big interface like this one, you can't actually see what you're doing with these scripts down here. So I like to make a, a little version of the interface appear over here in the left hand panel. So we do that by clicking this button here and you see it adds this new empty uh, panel here. So we can customize this panel here by right clicking inside of it and we can select one of the many elements we want to display. So I'm going to select script content, the little picture of a house. I don't know why it's got a picture of a house, but it's got a picture of a house. And if we select from the drop down here, we can choose the script that we want to see the interface of. So for example, um, we have this legato script here. So if we find the legato script, it will show the interface of that script over here. We want the main interface script. So we're going to click interface. And now we've got a version of the interface. It's a bit big, so we can make it smaller. Just change the zoom factor there. And now I can move controls over here and we can see them move on this side because those controls have been linked together. And it's just really handy for when I'm working um, on my separate scripts that are connected to the main interface. I find it really useful to have this over here on the left hand side. Okay, if we click this button again, uh, this button, by the way, this symbol indicates we're adding another uh, panel below uh, the ones we have. So it's, it's like adding a new row to a table. So if we click that again, we get a new panel down here, this one, and we can collapse and expand it using this little triangle. We can do the same with this one as well. 
Now if we want to delete one of these panels that we've added, there's a little X button over at the right hand side, we can just click that and the panel will be removed. So the next thing I like to add here is a module browser. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select module browser. And this now shows all of the possible modules we can add in highs. So this is sound generators, things like samplers and sine wave generators. We've got MIDI processors. So we've got uh, the default script processor, which is the one that we can customize. And that's where we put our scripts. And then we've got a lot of built in ones like the transposer and legato and retrigger. We've got various modulators, things like LFOs and envelopes, and then we've got all of the effects. Now, the reason I like to have this here is when I'm writing in my scripts to interface with one of these components, let's say I want to interface with an ADSR envelope and I want to affect the attack parameter of it. Well, to find out what parameters are available, all I have to do is find it in this module browser and right click and I get a list of all the available parameters. So it's just a really handy reference for me to uh, come here and use this. The last thing I like to add here, let's just add another row, is I like to add an image pool table. And I usually put this right down at the bottom, make it quite small. And this just shows me which images I have loaded in my project and the amount of space they're going to take up and the number of times they're used in the project. So you can see here, I just have one image called empty PNG. It's 5.9 kilobytes and it's referenced 64 times. So I'm using that image in 64 different places in this project. Okay, now let's go to the scripting window, the scripting workspace. So this is what it looks like when we first open it. We have the script watch table over here, which by the way, you can also get to by clicking uh, this button here. So the one that looks like an eye, that's the script watch table. Now we can customize this interface quite a bit and you're probably going to want to um, really tweak this to suit your own workflow. So first of all, we've got some buttons over here on the left. We've got this picture of a house again. So that's going to be your interface, of course. We've got this button here, which is a script node, which um, you're probably not going to be using that too often unless you're doing DSP stuff. But if you are doing DSP stuff and you want to see your script node network, this is where it's going to show up. We've got the actual script editor, which is there by default. We have a file browser. I don't tend to use this file browser in the scripting workspace, but you might find it useful. And we've got an API browser. I usually leave this open all the time. The API browser is your reference manual, basically. So if you want to search for something, you just type it in the top here. So we can search for button. And it shows us every scripting command related to buttons. So really handy to have that. So I always leave that open there. I usually close the script watch table because that takes up quite a bit of room and I just open it up if I need it. So again, it's just one of these little triangles we can click to open and close. Now, when we click this house icon, we open the interface preview, but we also got a few other things you can see here. It actually says interface designer. So we've got a whole interface designer here. If I click that, it'll go away. If I click it again, that'll bring it back. So the interface designer, let's get rid of the scripting window. So we can just have a look at this. So on the left here, we have all the widgets. These are the controls, knobs, buttons, sliders, etc., that make up the interface. In the center here, we have the actual interface canvas that we can draw on and arrange our controls and stuff. And then if we select control, we have a property editor over on the right hand side where we can edit the properties of the selected control. And if I open the script window again, you can see that all gets a bit smushed up. So let's just make this a bit easier to work with. So first of all, I'll make the interface a bit smaller. If your interface is large like this, you get a scroll bar at the bottom so you can move around like that. So you can see everything that's going on. We'll make the component list a little larger and the interface uh, property editor we'll make that a little larger as well. So that's usually how I have it set up so I can kind of work with everything and then I'll open the API browser when I need it. Now I've actually scaled the resolution of my monitor here so that it works a bit better on YouTube. So what we're looking at is a, a 1920 by 1080 screen, but um, my screen is actually 2K. So usually I have a bit more room to play with. So what I'm showing you now looks a bit cramped, but on a 2K screen, it fits on much nicer. You'll of course want to adapt this to fit your screen size. 
Okay, some other things I like to customize. I like to add more scripting tabs because currently we can only see one script at a time. So I click this little plus button and we get another empty panel. We can right click in it and select script editor. And then now we've got two script editors. And I usually have about four or five of these. And then the last one I usually put as a markdown editor, which is for writing uh, documentation for your plugin. I've done a whole other video about the markdown editor, so check that out if you're interested. Okay, down at the bottom here we have a console, usually make that a bit smaller. Over on the right we have um, another script editor, which is just for the interface that we're looking at here. So sometimes that's a bit useful, but usually I just use the one I've got over there. Um, I guess if you're going full screen on the interface designer, then this little script editor down here is more useful. But I don't tend to use it very much. You've also got an on-screen keyboard down here as well. Again, I don't really tend to use it because I usually have a keyboard on my interface anyway. Okay, let's go to the sampler workspace. Now I don't tend to customize much in here. Um, I usually just leave it set up as it is. I think you've pretty much got everything you need. Um, sometimes I'll open that up, but very rarely. That's the sample pool. And it's a bit, a bit similar to the image pool that we saw down here, the image pool on the um, main workspace. Uh, except this time, instead of telling us about images, it tells us about our sample. So you can see how much uh, memory they're going to take up and how many times they're referenced. But I don't tend to use it very much. Um, I generally just leave it as default. So over here we've got the file browser, which is useful for loading in your samples. You just drag them down onto the mapping window. Then we've actually got the mapping window, of course, where we can select samples. And we've also got a table view, which is uh, very useful sometimes when you're dealing with lots of different samples, especially if they're layered on top of each other and you're trying to edit a particular sample. You can just select it over here. And there isn't really much else to say about this. So let's move on to the uh, custom workspace. Now this is quite interesting. So here you have an entire workspace to put on whatever you like. And you'll see that we have this same button over here that we had on the main workspace where we can add new rows. So if I click that, we get new rows. And again, like the main workspace, we can add things. So we could have a script editor, we could have uh, script content, see our interface. We can have macro controls and what else? File browser. So we can have all of these basic components. And again, to get rid of them, we just click the X over at the right hand side. Now, one cool thing about the custom workspace is because it's quite large, we can split it vertically as well. Now to do that, we need to enable this button here, which is the layout mode, or we can hit F6 and then it changes to this sort of slightly darker color. And now if we right click, you can see we can add tabs, we can uh, horizontally or vertically tile the interface, we can add spaces, uh, add uh, visibility toggle bar, whatever that is, I've not played with that. And there's some predefined layouts there. And we can also, once we've got a layout we like, we can actually export it or load it. For, uh, as a JSON object, which is great if you want to sort of back up your layout or if you want to share it with somebody else. So let's add a vertical tile. So now we've got this button here, which adds columns rather than rows. So if we click this, we now get two columns. And again, same thing, we can click it multiple times to get more columns. And we can customize each of these. And then within say one of these panes, we could add uh, another horizontal one. So this is kind of how I set mine up. And then over here on the left side, I'll add a tabs uh, control and the same on the right side, I'll add a tabs. And then I'll turn off layout mode. And in this tab, I'm going to add a script editor and in this one, a script editor. And I'll probably, I'll probably add two tabs actually. So we can have there we go. So we've got a couple of script editors. And down here, I usually add a console. Whereas the console, debug console, there we go. So now what I have is a way I can look at the same script. But for example, I could look at two different callbacks from the same script or two 
scripts side by side that are different and do comparisons and things like that. And it's just a really handy way to work with uh, two documents at once. Now, of course, you could customize this in other ways. If you don't need a, the two document layout, you could um, have interface previews or you could um, set this up for working with DSP and you could have your DSP network here and scripting on one side. Um, there's all sorts you can do. This is what I do, but I'm sure you've got other uses that are geared to your particular workflow. So what we've looked at so far, this is all built into the highs interface, but sometimes it's nice to be able to move things to a different desktop, especially um, script windows or interface previews. So to do that, we need a floating tile. And we can add a floating tile by going to view and down here to where it says add floating window. So now we've got a floating window. And again, if we hit F6 or enable layout mode, we can edit this pop-up just as we did for the custom workspace. So we can add horizontal tab and vertical tabs if we want. And we can put anything in here that we like. So let's disable the layout mode and let's just add a interface preview. Where is it? Script content. So now we've got a floating interface that I can move to a second desktop. So that can stay over there. I can go back to my script, make some changes, and go back over and see what it looks like. And I'm not limited to just one. I can have another floating window if I like. So I can have this one. Again, we'll enable layout mode by pressing F6. We'll add horizontal tile here. And I'll make two of those. So in the top, I'm going to have a script editor. And in the bottom one, I'm going to have a, uh, let's have a console. So now I've got a mini script editor. And I can put that over here on this workspace, on this virtual desktop. This depends on how many virtual desktops you have. And of course, you can put these, if you've got multiple monitors, you could spread these across multiple monitors. So now I can, I could have, for example, my um, sampler workspace on this screen, my scripting workspace on this screen, and my interface preview on this screen. And if you have these on three separate monitors, that's going to make it really quick for you to see everything that's going on um, at, at full size all at the same time. All right, guys, that was a quick look at customizing the highs interface to suit your particular needs. I haven't covered everything, but I've tried to sort of give you a good overview of Heise's interface in general and uh, the, the customization options available. So I want you to be able to go in there and explore it and tailor it to meet your particular needs. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you have enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it, please click the subscribe button. And if you've liked it, of course, click the like button. Thank you to my patrons at patreon.com for supporting my channel and my content. It's very much appreciated. I enjoy having the freedom to make these videos for you. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.